All right, I'm going to miss that little record scratch moment. It's really good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. And I'll warn you, I'm new on my coffee journey. And I, I this morning drank a, I didn't know what this means, double shot cappuccino. And I decided to go ahead and do my five-hour energy. And that's a, not a good idea. I'm not proud of it. I, you know, I, I'm not going to do it again. But what that means is I'm a little hyped up and I might crash at some point in this talk and you can just pick me up off the stage. So we'll see what happens, right? You never know um, around here. So today we are finishing this record scratch series built around some of the statements of Jesus that when you read them or hear them, you're like, well, did he just really say that? But as we unpack them, you realize they're really impactful statements and really important statements. Today, the most significant of all of them, as we're going to see. So we're going to close out that series. And I always hate to series, see a series go, but that means we get to say hi to something else on the other side. And so just to let you know what's happening next week. So Ryan Leak, who is one of our teaching pastors, uh, will be speaking. And I've I've asked him to do something that I've never asked him to do before, and that is to, I just said, hey, what's a talk that you've done somewhere else, because he speaks all over, that you just felt like God was in in a unique way and really worked and kind of a best of, you know, over the last couple of years, and just and bring that here. And so he's talking about how to work with complicated people, how to deal with difficult people. And so uh, come invite somebody to sit with you, and this week, maybe you're with a difficult person right now. I can just tell them, you know what, I'm not going to deal with you this week, but Sunday, we'll, we're gonna, I'm going to learn how. All right, so you get a pass this whole week, and then uh, come this week. Um, two things about this week I want you to know. On Thursday night, we're hosting a business leader roundtable, which is not just for business leaders, leaders in any sector or uh, however you have influence, uh, with Todd Bolsinger, featuring Todd Bolsinger, who's a best-selling author expert on change management and leading through organizational and other kinds of change. And it's going to be really good and a great opportunity not only to come and meet other people, but also to invite your work team and invite others into. Um, it's an easy entryway into something like a church for people. And so that's Thursday night, but sign up. Go online and sign up because it's a dinner uh, so they know. Um, and this week, I'm going to ask you to do something. So starting today, actually, we're hosting a conference here for pastors. So all this week, is a, it's called the uh, Lead Pastor Gathering for a network of churches of which we are a part of that network called the Irresistible Church Network. And the idea of that, we have somebody from ICN, awesome. And, uh, and so it's a group of pastors uh, in churches around the country and in some parts of the world that are built around doing church in a way, not just for church people, but for people who are not church people. And, uh, and to not just be internally focused, but more importantly, externally focused. And you would think, well, every church is like that, but it's actually, it's, it's kind of unique. And so, because churches, we fight it all the time, every church will just on its own gravitate toward internal focus. And to say, let's not do that. Let's be externally focused. And all these churches are, these are pastors of those kind of churches. And sometimes that's wonderful and fun, and sometimes it's difficult. And so there'll be pastors in all kinds of situations. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to pray this week for that gathering, that God will just help it be a place that's refreshing and life-giving and inspiring for those pastors. And some of you I'm going to ask, and I'm, here in a minute I'll ask you to raise your hand if you're up for this, to commit to pray every day for those pastors and for the event. So if you're up for praying every day for that, would you raise your hand and just let me know that and awesome. That's great. Please do so. We'll give you an update. So now back to our regularly scheduled programming. I normally don't do announcements, but uh, so today we, uh, we are finishing record scratch. And as I said, we're looking at the most significant statement in our series because it leads to a significant act of Jesus, a significant event in his life. And it is one of the more significant events in his life. It's recorded in every book about Jesus's life because of that. But it's also significant because it's one that he asks you and me to do as well. Because a lot of the big events and acts of Jesus are not things that he asks us to do. He does not ask you and me to die on the cross for the sins of the world. He doesn't ask you and me to walk on water. He doesn't ask you and me to raise people from the dead. And there's a lot of things he did he doesn't ask us to do. 
But he asks 100% of people who believe in Jesus, who want to follow him into a new life, he asks all of us to do this. And yes, you know already with the tanks and hearing the host at your campus, that we're talking about baptism. And the statement that we're going to be looking at is a pretty simple but very like powerful statement that Jesus made which, when he got baptized by a guy named John the Baptist. We'll read that passage. And the statement is simply, baptize me. And as we're going to see 2,000 years ago, that was a really radical statement. We'll understand why he did that. And, and very significant to God, as we're going to see. And here's where we're going to take it. With you and me, Jesus asks us to do this as the first thing that he asks believers to do when we come to the point of belief. So we're going to see why it's such a big deal. Because it is a way bigger deal than I think any of us can understand. And, and I don't mean like I do and you don't. I mean us. I, got, I don't think I understand how important this is to God. But we're going to get closer to understanding that today. And it'll be an opportunity for those of you who have been baptized. I want you to look back, think back to that time of your baptism. Whether it was a long time ago or a short time ago. Think back to that moment. And for those who have yet to be baptized, today will be an opportunity to spontaneously make that choice. So we have logistical help to make that happen. And don't worry about that part yet. Just be open to the possibility because a number of people will do that and have done that all weekend. And so let's look at Jesus's baptism to understand why it's so significant and what that means for us. And so that's in, a, in Matthew chapter three is where we'll be, where Jesus is baptized by a guy named John the Baptist. And here's the story. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Interesting how he tries to talk Jesus out of doing something. You ever tried to talk God out of doing something? Or like, God, why are you allowing this? Why are you doing that? But there's a lot going on here that we need to understand with Jesus' baptism. Because this, as I said, is a big deal 2,000 years ago. And I think we need to understand why. So here's, let me give you the backstory. So John the Baptist uh, was a unique guy. He was, he started his ministry before Jesus did because he was the one that God sent to prepare the way for the promised one, the Savior, the Messiah, as the Jewish people called him, that had been promised for centuries. So the people of God in the Old Testament era, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people are looking for the Messiah. And John the Baptist is there to say he's here, like he's about to show himself. Get ready. Repent is the word he uses. Turn, you know, be open to this. And he's out in the wilderness preaching this message and doing this. And it is like the biggest news of the day. Bigger than if Taylor Swift had come to Jerusalem back then or something. It's big because all these people are coming out to see. And it's very controversial because what he's doing is he's talking about how God is, is starting a whole new era of what it means to know God and what it means to walk with God. And the way what has been is no more. This is brand new as the savior of the world is coming. And one way to signify that, a powerful way to signify that is baptism. Now, baptism seems normal if you grew up in church or have some kind of connection with Christianity or just hear about it in American culture. You think, well, it's not that, why is it unusual that a religious leader would be baptizing people? That's what they do. Like, that's not, nor, that's not abnormal. But it was extremely abnormal. Because 2,000 years ago, Jewish people, and that's where Christianity starts, and that's where John, all these people that are coming are Jewish people, Jewish people did not get baptized. Baptism was a thing, but not for Jewish people. Baptism was a thing for people who were not Jewish who wanted to become Jewish. And they would get baptized as a way to signify this massive change they're making. But Jewish people didn't get baptized because they were already in, so to speak. So people who wanted to get in got baptized, but not Jewish people. Well, John was baptizing Jewish people. Why? Because what he was signifying is... This is brand new. This is not, you're not in. This is a whole new thing. What was, was. But now this is a new thing and everybody comes to God now the same way. Whether you're Jew or not Jew or Gentile or whatever you are, it doesn't matter. We all come to God the same way through the same Savior. And therefore John talks about, and therefore everybody's getting baptized, including Jewish people. And 
John talks about baptism as a connection to forgiveness of sins. Now, they, that may not seem strange to us, but 2,000 years ago, that was controversial. Because in the, in the system that they were in, the forgiveness of sins was about the temple and about you, you would go to the temple and you would do these sacrifices pointing to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus we know now. But then they would, you know, they were used to the temple system. So for John to be away from the temple and saying, be baptized in a way that's connected to forgiveness of sins, that outside of that was really a big deal and very controversial. And so when Jesus comes and decides to get baptized in John's baptism, that was a major statement. That would have been a record scratch moment for the crowds because it's signifying that he's part of this new thing. And John talked about Jesus as the Messiah uh, around the time of his baptism and made it clear he is the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. Meaning when he dies on the cross, he's the ultimate sacrifice. All that's over now because it's our relationship with God is based on his sacrifice for us and salvation and freedom and forgiveness that he offers as a gift. So there's a lot going on there. And then Jesus, when a record scratch moment for John, because when he looks at John and says, baptize me, well, John knows who this is. This is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He might have an inkling he's more than that. Eventually, his followers would, as Jesus reveals more and more that he's actually God, the Son of God, who has taken on human flesh to live among us. And if John had any inkling that this was God, I mean, imagine you, if, if God appeared to you and said, I want you to baptize me, you'd probably be like, uh, me? I don't think you know, I don't think I'm the one. I can, you know, maybe somebody else, I don't know, somebody better than me, I'm not the one. You need to baptize me, I can't baptize you. And that's, that's why the little conversation happened. And Jesus looks at him and says, hey, we're gonna do this because God the Father requires it. And we're, we, we submit to him, we, we're gonna do what he wants. We're gonna do what he requires. We're gonna fulfill righteousness is the way another translation says it. And so John is like, all right. And then what happens next shows how meaningful this is to God. After the baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. Now, according to the Bible, God is Trinity, it's a little confusing, but he's one and three at the same time. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So Jesus is the Son of God. So he's there. The Holy Spirit, that's talking about the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, is the Spirit of God. And then God the Father, we hear him speak, or he heard him speak from heaven. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. So you have the Spirit of God, the Son of God, the Father of God. You see how meaningful that is for the God the Father as he sees Jesus, his Son, being baptized. It's a big deal to him. And I believe that just as the baptism of Jesus was a big deal to God, I believe the baptism of you and me is a big deal to God. In ways we can't fully understand. I mean, maybe as a parent you can understand when you're child does something that's really meaningful and, and means a lot to you, it's like, wow, thank you. That there's something very profound in God's love for us that when we do what he asks and we take this step of baptism, that is just a, a really big deal in ways that maybe we can't even understand. And, and that's why Jesus, I mean, in, in the mission, when he gives the mission to Christians before he goes to heaven, he says, go into all the world and make disciples First thing, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. The first thing he asks us to do as we live this whole new life is baptism. And so today I want to understand, well, okay, what is baptism? And like, why is it such a big deal to God? And why is it, why is, I also believe potentially a really big deal to you and me. Like, why is such a big deal? And again, as we talk about this, I want you to think about it. If you've been baptized, think back to that moment. If you haven't been baptized, I'm going to encourage you to consider getting baptized today. And I know it's like, what? What are you talking about? And uh, you'll hear more about that. And there's also a lot of confusion about baptism. So I, I want to clear up some of that because there's been 2,000 years of church history 
And therefore, there's a lot of traditions. And we all, you know, a lot of us come from different traditions. And maybe you came from a tradition that baptized babies. Or maybe one that, no, you baptize adults. Or maybe some people sprinkle water. Some people dunk you under. And there's all kinds of traditions out there. And so we're going to just try to peel back the layers of 2,000 years to go back to the Bible and say, as best we can tell, what is this all about? And for those of you, those of you who are new to Christianity or not Christian, then it's an opportunity to look at baptism because baptism from the outside looking in is pretty weird. I mean, where else do people choose to get dunked in front of a bunch of people? Except for maybe the fair at a dunking booth or something like that. And, and so what, what is it all about? And so we're going to do that. Now I'm going to just do that with some big questions about baptism. And the first question is who should get baptized? Babies or people old enough to decide? And that's a big question because there's whole traditions of Christianity that baptize infants, infant baptism. And there's some like biblical reasons they can uh, have to do that. If you equate it to circumcision in the Old Testament uh, era, which baptized, you know, which uh, circumcised uh, male babies and that got them into the covenant and into all that. And if you say baptism is like that and kind of the same thing and this bigger covenant, this relationship with God, and therefore we do babies and baptize babies. That's kind of one way to get there. Um, and I get that. And many of you were baptized as babies by well-meaning parents who, you know, wanted you to follow God and all that. It's a beautiful thing. And so there's infant baptism. And then there's those who believe, well, no, actually baptism in the Bible is for those who are old enough to decide, not so much for babies. And we're on that side of it. As I look at the scriptures, as I look at the Bible, I think it's pretty clear that baptism is for those who are believers, those who are old enough to make that decision. And that's why when you look at the New Testament, there's zero babies in the New Testament that we have recorded, zero babies baptized. And also there's zero times we're told to baptize babies. But what you see instead is that belief precedes baptism. So you believe in Jesus and then you display that through baptism. So for example, in Acts 16, uh, this lady named Lydia uh, comes to faith. It says, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. And when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us in her home. So for Lydia, belief, and then baptism. Acts 8, 12, uh, the Samaritans, it says, but when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So these men and women who came to believe, believed and then they displayed that through baptism. And so we believe, as we look at the New Testament, that baptism is for those who are mature enough to make that decision. Because it takes maturity to understand what it means to what Jesus did and what it means to follow him. And, and babies are not quite that mature. I mean, I know your babies are way smarter than most. I know that. You know, I do. In, in fact, there's a new Jones baby in the world. Can I show you the new Jones baby? I have, you know, I have a new granddaughter. This is... Uh, Leland, right there, Leland Jane. And she, at that point, that was a couple weeks ago, she was like 36 hours old. So now she's about two and a half, three weeks old. And I will say, she is the cutest, smartest three week old on the planet. She really is. <laughs> but I don't think she's ready to give her life to Jesus or what. I don't think she's ready to do that. And so that's why at Chase Oaks, we, we don't baptize babies, we do baby dedications. And those are powerful things and really good things. It's really a dedication of the parents to say, hey, we want to raise this child in a way where hopefully they'll choose to follow Jesus one day and, and we want to be committed to that. But, um, but we baptize those who are old enough to decide. And so that does raise a question and that is, well, okay, what if you were baptized as a baby? Should you be baptized now that you're older, like you're an adult? And I would say, yes, I think you should to just live in obedience and do what Jesus asks us to do doesn't mean you have to feel guilty about being baptized. That was a beautiful thought and beautiful heartbeat of your parents. In fact, you may worry, well, wait a minute, am I going to offend mom? Like, is she going to be upset if I say, you know, and I don't, I don't think so. At least I don't think you have to do that in an offensive way, because really it's a beautiful thing, as I've been saying. Like, I think just tell mom this, hey, when what I'm doing is really an affirmation of what you did when I was a baby. And you hope that one day I would get to a place where I would want exactly that, to follow God with my life and to live for him. And thank you for raising me with that thought and with that heartbeat and for having that aspiration for me. And, uh, and I hope you'll celebrate with me as I, as I take this step and affirm that. Another question 
is about the mode of baptism, and that is dunking or sprinkling. Another way to say that is, well, how wet do you really have to get? And it depends on the wing of Christianity you're in. Um, you know, if you, some, it, there are people who sprinkle, which means you don't have to get that wet. You don't even mess up your hair, you know, things like that. And, and, uh, and there are some people who dunk. And, and, what, and I don't think this is the biggest deal in the world, but I also don't think it would have been that confusing 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, baptism, the word baptize or baptism meant something. It was a normal word in their culture. So everybody kind of had an idea in their mind. But one of the things that created confusion is that when they started, when the translators of the Bible started translating from the original Greek into other languages like English, they chose not to translate the word baptizo, uh, which is, uh, in, these are English letters, but they just took the Greek letters, beta, alpha, p, tau, and so on, and, and all they did is just made a new word out of the letters. So it made it a churchy word. It made it a, like a holy word. So when you hear baptize or baptize, you think, ooh, you know, it's a thing. And, but it was a normal word in that culture, and they should have just translated it. And, and in that culture, it, was, it just meant to dunk or submerge. And they used it regularly in their culture. So like if, if people in that culture, we have these you know, writings outside the Bible and stuff with Greek of the time, like if you were uh, making potatoes, and you were, let's say you're making mashed potatoes, you want to boil your potatoes, they would baptize their potatoes in boiling water. And not to make holy potatoes, they weren't trying to do that, they were just making mashed potatoes. Or uh, clothes, and you know, washing clothes and stuff, they would baptize their clothes in water to wash them. And again, they were not trying to make holy garments or anything, they're just washing their clothes. So 2,000 years ago, when you, saw, when you were baptized, you think submerge, or like John the Baptist, you could call him John the Dunker, or something like that, dunking contest, I don't know, but, uh, but you know, that's, that's just what you would have thought of. And, and the reason that we, again, not the biggest deal in the world, but the reason we also, we're dunkers, and so you kind of have to get pretty wet around here. But uh, it's also, I think, the best picture of what happens in baptism. Because baptism is a picture of what it means to come to know Jesus. That's the whole point. So like Paul in the book of Romans talks about that. How baptism, it's like how when we begin a relationship with Jesus, we die to our old way of life. And so we join Jesus when we go under the water in his death. And then we're raised up out of the water to a whole new life. And it's a picture of how we've died to our old life and we're raised up to a new life and a beautiful picture of that. And so we are dunkers. But if somebody really wants to get sprinkled, like they just had a $500 haircut or something, we'll, we'll sprinkle. Um, but normally we dunk. Um, another question is, who can baptize others? Just pastors or normal people? Because I promise you, pastors are not normal people. I know a lot of pastors. We're going to have a pastor's conference this week. There won't be one normal person there. And that's okay. God loves abnormal people. Uh, we're a church full of abnormal people, and that's the way God wants it. But, uh, but what does that mean? Like, because in a lot of culture, a lot of church cultures and settings and streams of Christianity, you have to be like a professional Christian. You have to get paid to be a Christian in order to baptize other people and uh, a recognized leader. And, uh, and, but when you go back again, peel the layers back 2,000 years ago, that wasn't even a thing. Um, you, you had leaders and people and all that, but, but that, those distinctions weren't really big distinctions because in the New Testament theology is that every Christian is a minister. Every Christian has a ministry. Uh, every Christian, we're, we're all called this is a whole other sermon. It's going to be confusing. I'll say it anyway. We're all priests. We're all ministers. We're all, and we all have a ministry. And so therefore, what you see in the New Testament is just believers baptizing believers. And so there's freedom. It doesn't have to be somebody like me who's got, you know, people call pastor. I mean, I can, but you can too, if you know Jesus. And so that's why you'll see at Chase Oaks, when people get baptized, and I love it, you'll see uh, parents baptizing their kids. Sometimes kids, as they get older, baptizing parents, spouses, baptizing spouses, friends, baptizing friends, leaders, small group leaders, kids co-leaders, youth leaders, baptizing, and vice versa, all of that. And it's a wonderful thing. In fact, I think last year's baptism, big, when we did a big baptism thing, um, there was a family, again, they didn't plan to, they did it, they said, you know what, let's get baptized, because they had come to know Jesus, and, uh, and there were four of them. And it was such a beautiful picture because they all came up and the mom baptized the dad 
And then the dad baptized the mom, and then both parents baptized their two kids. And it's just this beautiful thing. And so if you do choose to get baptized here, and even today, and you're with somebody that would be meaningful to say, hey, would you baptize me? Just, yeah, that's great. And uh, have them come up. Or even if you just want a baptism buddy, there's pastors to baptize too. Um, it, just to stand there uh, with you, that's great. That's great also. Another question. And this, is a, this one's a really big one. And that is, is baptism necessary for salvation? And this has a really short answer. No. Uh, no with an exclamation point. Because there's no work that we do that is necessary for salvation. That's why he's a savior, because we can't do it ourselves. It's not, a relationship with God is not about us trying to be good enough for God and being religious enough and doing enough things. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Paul said, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. That even something like baptism, as important as it is, is not what saves us. We begin a relationship with Jesus. We say yes to his free, what he offers as a gift. Just simply say yes, thank you. And, and it's based in his work, not in our work. And baptism is a outer display of that. And so no, it's not necessary for salvation, a word that just means to have a relationship with God. But then it leads to another question. It's like, well, okay, if I'm going to heaven anyway, then do I really have to get baptized? And... I'd say if that's where you're at right now, that's a messed up question. I mean, isn't it? Like, it's like saying, okay, Jesus, I know this is like a big deal to you, and it's the first thing you ask me to do, and yeah, I want to follow you, but I really, I really don't want to get my hair wet. Or I really don't want to, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, or it takes a whatever, and it's kind of uncomfortable, and, uh, and I, I just think that's messed up. And as opposed to a heart that just says, hey, look, you've done everything for me. Yes, of course I want to do this. And not only just for that, but there's really good reasons to get baptized. God doesn't ask us to do things arbitrarily. It's meaningful for a reason. And, and so that leads me to, that, to the next question is that, well, then why is it a big deal? Why should every Jesus follower be baptized? And there's three reasons, as I'll lay it out. First one is for you. The baptism is a marker event that seals your decision to follow Jesus. Here's what I mean by that. When you get baptized, it's, usually, it's a moment of clarity where you know, hey, I, I believe in Jesus and I'm thankful for what he did for me, making it possible for me to know God. And I'm choosing to say yes to him and follow him. And baptism is an outer display of that. That's a very clear moment because you're going to need that one day. Because there'll be a time where you will lack clarity and you will have serious doubts. Am I really a believer or not? Or I mean, like you may, maybe you walk away from God for a while. Maybe you sin or you keep struggling with the same thing. And, and baptism is something you can always look back and say, hey, wait a minute. I know Satan would love for me to wallow in shame and guilt, but Jesus removed my shame and guilt because when he died for my sins, he died for my past, present, and future. And the guilt of my sin was taken away. And, uh, and, and I, I'm his, and I know I'm his. And I know for me, when I was a young, you know, I, I became a Christian really young, and I, I bet I prayed the prayer, so to speak, Lord, I, I'm in, and you know, I want uh, you to be in my life. I bet I prayed that a hundred times because I didn't know if it took. I didn't know if I did it the right way. And baptism is a way to just convince your soul, yeah, it, it took, like we're good. Um, also, it's powerful for others because baptism identifies you as a Jesus follower, and that's a big part of your life. And I encourage you, if you get baptized, to share that with people. And in fact, this service will be online and it'll be on YouTube. Uh, and so you can also, you know, people can see it that way as you say, hey, I want you to see this because it's a big deal for me. And it is a powerful external display of that. And then for Jesus, baptism honors him in a unique way. I think, again, in ways we don't fully understand like, why does it matter that much to God? But it does. And honestly, that's enough. Like, that would be, okay, Jesus, you did that for me. This is something you want me to do for me, for others. But for you, absolutely. This is something I can actually do that honors you in a unique way and, uh, and want to do that. Now, I'll talk some details about, man, if you want to do this, and we'll do some baptism in a minute, but I want to encapsulate these ideas in a, in a story of one of the baptizees, one of the people getting baptized this weekend, and, uh, and so let's, 
Let's watch the screens and hear his story. I'm deciding to get baptized today because I feel like it's uh, the next step that God is calling me, uh, he's calling me to do. Uh, came to know Jesus about five years ago. And uh, for me, that journey's looked a lot, a lot like a, a, a big wrestling match, <laughs> if you will. A lot of back and forth, uh, a lot of feelings of shame and guilt. Uh, I, I've, I've wrestled with the idea of baptism for a long time, but, but for, for many years felt like I was not worthy of, like I had too much sin in my past, like I still lived too sinful of a life, and um, those feelings of shame and guilt would win out. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it, it took me some, some time, and in my time here at Chase Oaks, I've really come to understand the, uh, the, 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 the free gift of, of salvation that is Jesus, and uh, the grace, the forgiveness that is available, and uh, all I've had to do is say thank you. It's, it's not mine to wrestle against, and so, you know, for me, a uh, big piece of this is surrender, and I feel like baptism is just the next step in my walk. Well, way to go, Daniel. And, and let me encourage you to consider doing the same thing, even if you didn't come ready to do that. Today would be an opportunity. Because, and the reason I say that is that in the New Testament, there was no gap between belief and then getting baptized. You didn't have to go to a class or read a book or whatever. It's not that complicated. You believe, and then that same day, people were baptized. My favorite example of that is a guy named, Eth well, we don't know his name, but he was an Ethiopian eunuch. And, uh, and in uh, the book of Acts, we, we told his story, and it says the eunuch asked Philip, who's the one that shared Jesus with him, and by the way, if you don't know what eunuch is, Google it later, it'll be fun, or, or call your parents and ask them, even if they're adults, just that'd be fun. But tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, this Old Testament writer himself or someone else? And Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here's water, why shouldn't I be baptized? Because he just come to believe. It's like, why not now? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. And then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And I love the question, like, why not now? And, and Philip's like, yeah, why not now? Let's do it. And I'd throw the same question out to you, like, why not now? Um, and practically, there may be some reasons. You think, well, I didn't come ready for that. And that's why we do have, uh, we have clothes ready for you to change into. There's a private area for you to change into those clothes. And uh, and that's why they're, um, what, part of that is these, you know, t-shirts, so you'll get these t-shirts, and, and they're cool, by the way, because when they get wet, they have a message on the bottom, so at the top, it says, the old is gone, and then when they get wet, it says, roll tide, which I think is, <laughs> I think Jesus loves that, and uh, no, it says, the new has come, it says, the new has come, and, um, and so, yeah, so that's just a memento of, of what it is, but just think about it, where you're coming from, like, for some of you, if you have yet to be baptized and you just never have done that, and then why not now? And if you want to do that, you just go out through, you just go out these doors and there's people who will walk you through it and, and show you where to go and, and make sure you get the right clothes. And then you'll join uh, people in line here and get baptized. People have been doing it all weekend. And uh, if you have somebody you want to bring with you, uh, just say, hey, would you do this? Either baptize you or just hang with you on the stage or something. That's great too. For some of you, you know, if you're baptized as a baby, like I said, and then maybe this is your time to get baptized now that you're at this point in your life and want to obey Jesus that way. Others of you, maybe in the past, you've been baptized even, but just, you didn't really know what you're doing. You're making somebody happy. And, but now you're like, okay, no, this is my deal. Like I, I want this to be my deal. For some of you, maybe your decision to believe in Jesus, like to say, I, I'm ready to become a Christian. Like, I, I get that Jesus died for me. He offers everything as a gift. I want to say yes to that. Thank you. Just like Daniel talked about. And now I want to display that through baptism. And so this is my moment. This is my time to, to do this. I don't know where you're coming from, but I would encourage you to be open to say, God, and, and what's going to happen is uh, after I pray, the band is going to just start singing a song. And during that song, when you're, as soon as you're ready, it could be right away or whatever, just go ahead and, and go back there. And uh, so you can go through the process of getting changed and then joining others. The rest of us, our job is to, and our privilege is to celebrate like crazy. Our brothers and sisters who are making this huge step in their life, and we want to honor them. But for now, let's bow our heads together in prayer. 
And I'm gonna invite you to just talk to God. It's what I normally do at the end of these talks is just say, hey, it's about you and God, so why don't you talk to him? And prayer is just talking to God in your own words. You can't get it wrong. You don't, he's just your father, he loves you. And so maybe now just ask him, God, do you want me to do this? And if so, would you give me the courage to just do it? And for others, if you've done that before in a meaningful way, just say, God, would you help me remember that moment and that, that clarity? Because I wanna honor you for what you're doing in my life. And Father, we do celebrate you, your love for us, your unconditional love for us, your relentless love for us. You just keep pursuing us, keep pursuing us. And would you keep drawing us to yourself? In Jesus' name, amen. So again, the